turn back down to look at the 45 and 60 degree raker. What we have here is the 60 degree raker. The concept is going to be the same as far as capturing the load, it's just done a little differently. So, what makes it up? What's the anatomy of the 60 degree raker? Well, you have your wall plate, all right, we call it upright. You have your raker, and you have your sole plate. At the tail end there, you have what's called the thrust block. This raker is made out of 4x4 lumber. We're using a 6x6 for a thrust block. So how does it capture the load? Well, here's our wall. Our wall is kicking out. The load is hitting our wall plate or our upright. It's coming down the raker. The raker is transferring it into the sole plate. The load is traveling. It's hitting or dead end right to the thrust block. And everything from here to here is going into the ground. This sole plate on the bottom, right, that load, that wall is pushing out. So this sole plate is seeing a bit of forward, forward force. So that load and that force meet right here into the ground it goes. And we have what's called a midpoint brace here. You figure as this load is pushing forward, that load is hitting the top of the raker, pushing this way. The load is being transferred down to the bottom of the raker, being resisted and being pushed this way. So if you took a ruler and you pushed on either end, it's going to want to bow, okay, just like this. It's under compression. So this midpoint brace ties the raker, the sole plate, and the wall plate together and prevents that and resists that force. We have down here, there's two by four wedges. You have a cleat here and you have a cleat here. Now, just like in the uprights of the three pulse vertical and the double T, what we're going to do before we lock these in with gusset plates, we're going to take and we're going to drive them together. Doing that, we'll shoot force up the raker. It's going to hit the cleat here. It's going to snug it in nice and tight. It's going to give us that force we want up against that wall to give it the added support. The cleat's up here. It's a 24-inch 2x4 cleat. The same down here, all right, 16 nails, 16 D nails into the lumber, 8 Ds into the gussets. And um, I mean, it's pretty, pretty straightforward and simple. Um, the concept of capturing load is the same, like I said, it's just done a little bit differently. So we'll pause here for a second. I'll go grab the 45 degree raker, bring it over, take a quick look at it, and wrap things up. Okay, so now we're back here at the 45 degree raker. The concept is the same, the only difference is the angle you're getting. When we're cutting the raker portion here, you're going to get your capture point, right, where you want this raker to hit to initially start supporting the load. So for that 60 degree raker we just looked at, you would take, let's say this is 8 foot, you would take 8 foot, you would multiply it by 14, that would give you the inches from point point that this raker needs to be lengthwise. For the 45 degree raker, we're going to do 17 as the magic number. So if you ever forget which is which, I mean this is really simple, but you think of a bigger number, okay? 17 is going to give you a larger number, which means your raker is going to be larger, giving you a bigger angle, all right? The 60 and 45 are doing the same thing, but the 60 takes up a little less space. Should you be cramped, uh, tight on some space, if you can get a 60 degree raker in there, you can go ahead and go with that. But quickly, we'll look at this. Same thing. Wall plate, raker, sole plate, thrust block. We're capturing that load. It's bringing it down the raker. It's hitting the, uh, the thrust block at the end. We have our 24 inch cleat here and up top there. The same 2x4 wedges. We're driving them in. It's giving us our force up this way. Tightening it in. We can then secure our gusset plates here and here, there and there, up top there. Um, like I said, it's the same thing as a 60, the same anatomy, um, just a different angle. That's about it. Remember, they're always built in pairs. Build them right. Use the correct nail patterns. Use the correct nails. Remember, plywood, dimensional lumber, using 8D. All right? Dimensional, dimensional, like 2x6 to 4x4 using 16s. So thank you for coming back and watching this training video. I hope you enjoyed the article. I hope you enjoy the videos. And I hope the videos complemented what you read in the article. 
if there's any confusion, I hope things were hammered home here for you. So I'll catch you next month with another article, another set of videos, and, and huh, until then, stay safe, stay progressive, and keep training.